Welcome to the ICA at Maine College of Art. I'm Julie Poitras Santos, Director of Exhibitions, and I'm delighted to welcome you to our new exhibition, Acoustic Resonance. This exhibition explores sound as an artistic medium, subject, and tool for cultural transformation. Many of the exhibition uh, works talk about power, public space, or social space, and I think really share a vulnerability and toughness. So please come, let's have a look together. Sound is a type of energy, a mechanical wave made by a vibrating object. The vibrations of the object set particles in the surrounding medium, air, water, metal, for example, in motion and transport energy through the medium. In Julianne Schwartz's work here, Void Weave, an inaudible sound file is played through the, the wires, the impossibly thin wires that are very much like hair and snarls and tangles. I think it really brings this um, alert sense of sensitivity to the work where you cannot hear what's affecting the wires, but in fact, they're shuddering in response. Her other work in this room, Bone Score Paper Zero, rattles nearby and attack and response. It's made from paper, wire, and magnets, and a sound file is translated through the materials to the paper, which becomes a kind of functional speaker. The sounds in Bone Score Paper Zero include breathing, a whispered conversation, a timpani drum, rustling paper, a child's laugh, a storm, thunder, and are subtly audible if you lean in close to listen. In Audra Willowick's installation, Air, you can wander through an installation if exposed two by fours, listening to a series of audio works constructed of breathy interruptions and pauses. The work consists of a score drawn from the Constitution of the United States of America, where all language was removed from each page with the exception of the commas. The work has this way of keeping us on the breathy edge of anticipation. While no words arrive, we have the sense that something is about to be spoken. As Woolowick has shared in musical notation, the comma is the breath mark, the symbol for a performer to take a breath. And here the remaining text of commas is presented to breath practitioners from various fields including singers, actors, yoga and lamas instructors to interpret and translate through the lens of their own training. I'm standing in the middle of a work by Matt Joint, Josh Rios, Anthony Romero, that features a new sound piece by Autumn Chacon. The title of the work, Ground, Unsettle, Surround, Act One, Establishing a Sound, expands upon the artist's conceptualization of sonic territorialization, or the process by which sound, as theory and practice, announces authority and can act a liberation within a site and landscape. As you stand on the platform here on the rotunda, you hear the sounds playing from different speakers. There's the overhead sound of helicopters. There's this amazing embodied sound that you experience in the middle of the work. This work is by Raven Chacon, uh, a composer as well as a visual artist. And it's from a series of scores that tell the history of America through sound. This piece in particular, American Ledger Number no. 1, really tells the creation story of America. The work is realized by sustaining and percussive instruments, as well as with the throwing of coins, chopping wood, a police whistle, and a match. As Chacon describes the work, moments of contact, enactment of laws, events of violence, the building of cities and erasure of land and indigenous worldview are mediated through graphic notation. Printed on a blanket, the work teaches us a new way to envision and tell history by imagining the sonic remnants and records of our past.
This work, In the Fury by John Fireman, is a hypertextual film collage that really looks at the acoustic attacks on the American embassy in Cuba in 2017. Reveling in the unsolved mysteries of the Havana syndrome and the ensuing news coverage, the film covers subjects ranging from the first field recordings of British skylarks, Judeo-Christian views on drumming, the history of weaponized sound and sonic warfare, protest rights, and the frequency content of peacocks screaming. Fireman's documentary reveals footage from ads for the long-range acoustic device produced by the LRAD Corporation a military sonic device that is also used as a deterrent in protests. During the 1920s and 30s on the southern coast of England, giant sound mirrors, acoustic mirrors, were built out of concrete. Um, to capture the sound of approaching enemy aircraft. This technology essentially became a dead-end technology with the advance of airplane speed and also the development of radar. But the concrete sound mirrors still stand today as a kind of sentinels and reminder of a, an older technology. Audra Willowick's second piece in the exhibition, um, Concrete Sound, was inspired in part by this history looking at acoustic foam that's used in sound spaces and anechoic chambers. She created this work that instead of absorbing sound, in fact, reflects it and operates as a resistant material. In Lairs of the City, this video installation by Angel Navarre yes. and Valerie Tevere, the artists really think about how sound can transform our cities. As a sort of starting point for their work, they really asked, how can song transform place? For this work, they put out a public call to musicians and singers in Santa Ana, California, where they were working as artists in residence, and created a cumulative song that really works in layers to talk about the transformation of the city that's happening. As we witness a real growth in empty storefronts due to the economic challenges of the pandemic, the work gains added poignancy. Here on the wall, we have um, the score for the song that's being performed. And you can see how the song builds in a series of layers um, through the course of the video. Andrea Ray's aspirational LP series asks viewers to imagine music that has yet to have been realized. Installed on a low shelf in the galleries, viewers can pick up the album covers and feel free to read the liner notes and learn about the songs. Using the future perfect tense, yet to have been, Ray refers to writings on queerness by Jose Esteban Munoz. She explains, many of the series titles pull from former radical ideas not fully made manifest. Her research into free love communities reveal hopes for radical transformations of society with ideas so radical they have yet to find their place and time in history. The aspirational LPs reveals a desire to commune with others, to listen, discuss, invent, and reimagine the future together. Artist Ryan Adams began uh, as an artist in the world of graffiti, one of the most profound ways to claim public space through visual means. And he said when he began, he really realized that he was in fact screaming, I am here. It was a way of saying visibly, but also in a way sonically to shout loud within the public space. This work in particular, this mural really looks onto the public street. You can see it from outside. And if you look closely and carefully within the geometries of the mural, you can see the text, I am here, hidden within the geometric forms. Throughout Portland, Ryan's work transforms our cityscape through their scale, presence, and vibrancy. 
During the pandemic, it has become clearer than ever that the air is public space. Within our shared spaces, we distance ourselves to keep safe and raise our voices to be heard. Sound travels through the air. It carries across neighborhoods and through barriers. It can claim a space or transform a city. Even at a distance, it communicates our longings for each other and our desires for change. Sound can provide us with inspiration for imagining the future together. You might have to listen hard to hear it, but it's there.